Urca's 1990 season opened with its biggest race, the Hard Rock Bet 200 at Daytona. Arco was gaining a reputation as a great stepping stone into NASCAR at this time, giving chances to young drivers like Kyle Petty, Davey Allison, and Joe Rutman. Despite being the biggest and most anticipated race of the season, the race would be overshadowed by one devastating incident. After a horrible accident, Slick Johnson would be put on life support and be fighting for his life. While under caution, chaos ensued after Bob Keselowski was spun into Kevin Gundaker's car. A paramedic who was tending to Kevin flew through the air and seemed to have been killed instantly. Just 75 laps into the race, two men were fighting for their lives. Julius David Johnson III was born on February 23, 1948 in South Carolina. He began racing dirt tracks at the age of 16, but paused his career for a four-year stint in the military. Johnson was much more recognizable from his nickname Slick, and started gaining local stardom in the late 60s and 70s because of success on short tracks in the Carolinas. Johnson owned a body shop and was a race car builder, so in addition to his racing efforts, he was very involved in the racing world in general. In 1979, Slick made his way into the NASCAR Winston Cup Series and managed to score a top 10 at Rockingham. The next year, he fielded a car of his own for 14 races and scored an impressive 5 top 10 finishes. Despite starting his career pretty strong, his NASCAR career really never took off like he would have hoped. For the next 8 years, he would just race in a handful of races per year, primarily races in the Carolinas and Atlanta. This is pretty much what his career in racing came down to. He would work in a shop all week, beat all the local guys on the weekends, when NASCAR came to town and he had a chance to race, he would turn up and hold his own against some of the best in the world. After racing in the Winston Cup Series became too expensive, he was given a shot to drive by Earl Sadler in the ARCA Series for one race at Atlanta. Johnson qualified 19th and brought the car home in 10th place. The effort was good enough to get him back in the same car the following February at Daytona. The 1989 ARCA 200 was headlined by Bobby Dodder's wild escape from fire and Tom Ussery's big crash in which he suffered critical injuries. ARCA did not necessarily have the ARCA brakes reputation it does today, but any time they went to a big track, wrecks were obviously a concern. These cars were just as fast as Winston Cup cars for the most part but they were usually piloted by drivers vastly younger or more inexperienced than Winston Cub drivers. For speed comparison, Arca's Daytona pole sitter was just 2 miles per hour slower than Winston Cup's pole speed set by Ken Schrader. Slick Johnson would qualify only 39th, but just making the race was an achievement as more than 30 drivers were sent home. On lap 39 of the race, the first bad accident happened. Ramos Dot flipped five or six times on the front stretch. Several other incidents happened throughout the race, but there is really no footage or documentation of them. Later in this video, I will get to why that is. But with six laps to go, the biggest crash of the race happened. The incident started with the number 95 of Slick Johnson spinning and then hitting the outside wall in turn four. Cars hurled into the crash, with Johnson's car being hit not once, not twice, but three times by oncoming cars. Kevin Gundaker almost became the fourth car to hit Johnson, but squeezed through the inside on the grass. However, he lost control on the grass, and his car slid into Billy Thomas's Pontiac, effectively ending the race for both drivers. The caution flag flew, and rescue crews headed out immediately to help the crash drivers. Paramedics swarmed Johnson and Gundaker's cars, as well as the others wrecked out. The field raced back to the line, but after they crossed the line, they didn't back off. It wouldn't be apparent for another 15 to 20 seconds, but the last time passing the start-finish line, the drivers had missed the yellow flag and were once racing back to the line. By turn 3 and 4, most drivers had figured this out by seeing wrecked cars and safety vehicles, but there was still mass confusion. Bob Keselowski, the 1989 ARCA champion, slammed on his brakes as he got to the scene of the accident. 
Unfortunately, he was tagged on his right rear, and that sent him spinning into the grass, directly toward Gundaker's car. Paramedic Mike Stanley was tending to Gundaker whenever Keselowski's car hit him. Gundaker's left rear hit Stanley's legs and sent him flying into the air. Stanley's body cartwheeled through the air, hit the ground, and rolled lifelessly on the grass. Seconds later, Keselowski exited his car and collapsed to the ground. So in a matter of seconds, not only was there uncertainty of the drivers in the crash, but there was another wounded driver and possibly a paramedic dead. Luckily, more paramedics rushed over to Mike and found a pulse and a heartbeat. Mike was alive, for now. In an interview months later, Mike said he remembers waking up to his friends weeping, crying, and screaming. They all believed he was dead. After Stanley was stabilized, attention turned to Slick Johnson, who was unconscious. He was rushed to the hospital and put on life support for head and chest injuries. Unfortunately, Slick Johnson would die three days later due to a basilar skull fracture and chest injuries. The term basilar skull fracture wasn't really widespread at the time, although it was a prevalent injury in all racing series around the world. As we all know, just about 10 years later, this injury would haunt NASCAR for several years and would take the lives of many other drivers. Mike Staley had broken arms, legs, knees, and required reconstructive surgery on his arm. It was going to be a lengthy road to recovery to be 100%, but he did eventually make a full recovery. He never returned to the track as a paramedic, but would go on to be a motivational speaker after the accident. After the crash, several drivers were outspoken about the racing standards in the ARCA series. It was just a case of people getting in over their heads, said race winner Jimmy Horton, as he attributed inexperience to the cause of the tragedy. In the same breath, he acknowledged the only way for them to get experience was to go out and race. Benny Parsons stood up for the ARCA drivers, saying they did their due diligence in screening drivers and made sure they were equipped to handle Daytona. Ron Drager, vice president of ARCA, honestly broke down the issue pretty well. He believed the core issue was ARCA's place and reputation as a stepping stone to NASCAR. You have a continual turnover of veterans and rookies. It places us with a much higher percentage of inexperienced drivers. Regardless, not much in terms of safety came directly out of the crash. This crash was almost certainly brought up in discussion for things like racing back to the line, driver screening in ARCA and at Daytona, and other safety measures. However, nothing directly came out of the crash. Most public outrage was probably softened due to there being no video of the incident at the time and only eyewitness reports to rely on. See, ESPN planned to show the race on tape delay later in the week instead of it being played live on TV. TV networks just didn't have any space in those days to block out four hours for an ARCA event. So typically a network would record the event, cut it down to around a one hour show, and play the event later that day or later in the week in a time slot that made sense. Because of the gruesome scenes of the crash and uncertainty on the health of both Slick Johnson and Mike Staley, ESPN decided not to show the race on air. The only reason the footage that you've seen in this video has been made public is because of Rescue 911. It was a typical docudrama TV series that would dramatize, reenact, or cover medical emergencies. CBS reached out to ESPN about using that footage for an episode and their request was accepted. They also brought on several paramedics who worked that day, driver Kevin Gundaker, and Mike Staley himself to talk through the incident. Despite the triumph of Staley's recovery and survival story, there was another side. Slick Johnson's accident was a tragic one. A Carolina native who was just a part-time racer, getting into anything he could drive. He showed off his talent in the Winston Cup Series and proved that on his best days, he could compete with the world's best stock car drivers. His life was tragically cut short at only 42 years old. He left behind his wife and two sons. 
And that's it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it or find it interesting. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you never miss a video. But that's it for me. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.